here's another theory I have. See, I don't like panpsychism because it feels like really woo-woo and not like science. I feel like a gypsy hippie. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, that's kind of frowned upon, so you don't want to get too into it. But for all reasons I talk about in past videos, there's like kind of some evidence, you know, entanglement, that things are really linked together. You know, if everything's linked together, everything could be conscious. There's all different reasons. Um, they're in past videos if you watch those videos. But listen to what this guy says here. Um, I know. I just want to say, I think this maybe supports panpsychism. Listen to those. It gets into that tree with a forest thing. Well, the, 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 the trouble is that it doesn't have to be me who's looking. There. In fact, it doesn't have to be any conscious entity. Uh, uh, any kind of interaction with the external world that leaks out the information about whether this qubit was a zero or a one, sort of that causes the zeroness or the oneness of the qubit to be recorded in you know, the radiation in the room, in the molecules of the air, in the uh, uh, wires that are connected to my device, any of that. Uh, 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 as soon as the information leaks out, it is as if that qubit has been measured. Okay. It, so that's like if the tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? I always said no. You need an observer. But you really just need something there. Like another tree being there I'm might sorry. act as... A, you've said that? Yeah. Yeah, it might act as a good enough observer to... That's what he basically just said. Yeah. So observation is relative. Everything is relative. Observation is relative. To me, it wouldn't make a sense. Like my answer to that question would be no. But then I guess you could say objectively, if there's a blade of grass that it lands on, then the answer is yes to the blade of grass is how you have to answer that question. Correct. And then observation becomes relative. The tree in the forest becomes relative. Quantum is relative. And we know that because on the black hole's edge, we know you just sit there on the on the um, on the disc of the hole. Mm -hmm. From looking at it from the outside, you'd, you'd I'd see you just sitting on the edge. Right. But you'd be inside. Right. That's really what's happening when a tree falls in a forest. Right. And yeah. And you can imagine the squirrel in your mind's eye, hears the sound of... It doesn't even have to be a squirrel. See, that's kind right. of conscious, that kind of being. It could be a blade of grass. You know? I've said that. I, I'm saying, like, who are we to judge who the observers are? Yes, I think the observers are everything. And this gets into panpsychism again. It does. It's the more little... I study quantum computers, the more I'm thinking panpsychism is a thing. And it's actually being proven by these quantum computers as they dig deeper into quantum computers. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more and more obvious that the observer can be anything. Yeah. And if the, if the observer can be anything, then whatever that is, my table, whatever it is, brings it into being. Yeah. So, and it would probably disprove the Heisenberg principle because it might suggest that like particles have some certain level of observing power. That's correct. See, I made my last video, I think I uploaded, I might upload one in between that last one, but that mm -hmm. one I made on Heisenberg where I asked people to explain it. Yeah. I said if the photon had like a measuring device on it, when it hits the electron, from its perspective, can it record position and momentum? I feel like it could, and the problem is like us trying to observe that process. Right. We're, we're like one degree removed too much. Right. So that means like if the photon is conscious, which there's more and more evidence that it probably is on some level. Um, yeah. You know, it doesn't have a brain and it doesn't have all, but consciousness isn't a brain. That's a whole nother thing. Consciousness is like this thing. So it could have it. It's more like a, like a specter or something. Does it suggest that material reality, like any kind of material substance, is basically an observer? 
doesn't have to rely on consciousness. Yeah. Just material reality is a de facto observer. I guess. I guess it could. Yeah, because yeah, you're not... I mean, we as humans, so that means we make like all the these... early universe, like right after the Big Bang, which I don't believe in, but after that white hole, basically, is what that was, I think, or someone turning on the sim. <laughs> um, like right after that happened, particles were around, so they were probably observing that process. Yeah, it's interesting to think if we could capture some of those particles. And like reverse engineer them, we might get the answer to what happened at the start. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. The information might be in those photons still, and whatever they are electrons, um, there's molecules, there's all kinds of stuff from. Whatever the rules were at the beginning. That might be permanently entrapped in that, in those particles as data. And you might be able to, because from its perspective, it's carrying that observation. So you might be able to capture those specific ones and then, yeah, capture those specific ones and then just reverse engineer it. I think we're probably a ways off from that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if scientists talk about that. I know a few physicists watch my channel. If you guys know if that's like a thing being considered even by physicists right now, let me know. I've never come across that. but. If it, if it is, I want to research it more, so let me know the name of that theory or that process that they're doing. Yeah, that's really all I got on this.